she's taking off her sweater. She, she's full on squatting down. Oh, she's just pooping right on the floor. You see the poop come out. You see the poop? Oh wow, that was a vicious throw. She, yeah. Like, she she gave him like a, a two like a monkey. Fa- a two seam fastball there. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 21 of the Scruffcast. I'm John. And I'm Dan. Now, listeners, you may remember about a month ago or so, we had a little segment on the episode, Duke of Who Gives a Shit. We had a little segment called Queen Talk, and we heard the we heard the fans loud and clear. There was a big royal event that just happened this past weekend, and they wanted Queen Talk to make a return. So it's time for officially episode... 21's Queen Talk segment. Episode 2 of Queen Talk. Episode 2 of Queen Talk on episode 21 of the Scruffcast. So, this past weekend, there was the royal wedding between Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. (laughs) That was almost almost on the cusp of busting out our British accents again. (laughs) We'll leave them in the past. Now... We don't really have too much to say because if you listen to uh, the first uh, time we t- we had the Queen Talk segment, uh, we didn't really care, as you can tell by the name of the episode, Duke of Who Gives a Shit. So, did you watch any of the uh, wedding at all? Did you Damn. wake up? No, I'm a very important person. Five with, o'clock in the morning. I'm a very important person no, I... with many important things to do in my life. Oh yeah, I can I can imagine. But uh, as longtime listeners of the Scruffcast may know, um, I've brought up sports gambling before on the podcast. Now, the like, underground world of gambling is so full of degenerates, Dan. Yes. That there's actually official odds for props, prop bets. Oh, boy. On events like this. We've talked about prop bets before. We, we have. We've made. We made Super Bowl bets. We yes. made Super Bowl bets. <clears throat> so, for the listeners at home who uh, played their prop bets, we don't have the results because they didn't watch it, but I can read you through an interesting list of prop bets that you could have bet on if I had read this list last week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hear it. So, the uh, royal wedding props. Who will walk Meghan Markle down the aisle? And then they have a long list and all the odds. Do- Doria Ragland. I don't know who that is. Prince Charles. That's who it ended up being, right? Yes. Walks down alone. Prince William. Prince Philip. Kate Middleton. Queen Elizabeth. No, it was Prince Philip who walked her down. No. Who's no, it was Prince Charles, I believe. Prince Philip is married to the queen, right? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, he's a super old guy. He'd be, he'd be wheeling her down yeah. in his wheelchair. Hop on my scooter! <laughs> <laughs> Shits in a little basket and he just carries her up to the front. That's uh, very royal. A little meep meep. So, uh, the, the big one's Queen Elizabeth II, a plus 10,000 odds. It seemed very unlikely she'd walk her down. Now, I gotta say, if I was the queen, I would be looking at these, betting on it, and then be like, no, I'm walking her down. Place a bet. She yeah, we're, we're gonna make a ton like of a money. a $10 million dollar bet. For every hundred for every hundred dollars you bet, you're winning ten thousand. Oh boy, pretty crazy. Um, so if you had bet a hundred bucks on Prince Charles, you would have won twelve hundred. All right, the next one was now, now this one gets really particular, and you're like, really? I can't believe people are betting on this. Color of queen's hat during wedding ceremony. Now there's plenty of options and plenty of odds here: green, blue, pink, yellow, white slash cream slash ivory. That's all one. Whoa. Okay. Purple, orange, red, gray slash silver. Beige slash gold. Those seem like two different colors. Brown and black. <clears throat> the highest, uh, or the low, the lowest odds, you'd win the least, so it seemed like a lock for green. What color was it actually? I don't know. I think it was yellow. It was green. Was it green? But I think, but you know what, though? That one's kind of messed up, because I thought I heard that, um, uh, <clears throat> like, she always wears green at weddings or something like that. That must be why uh, the, no, the odds maybe, are so Maybe low. that's wrong. No, I don't know. Anyways, continuing on. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry first child. You could bet on the the sex of the child, male oh, or female. My God. What if they don't have children? I, I guess you, it's just a push. I don't know. You'd have to wait till they get old and and die. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Meghan Markle's mother's hat color during the ceremony. Now it's a bit of a wild card because you know we didn't know we don't know too much about her family compared to like you know the Queen and stuff. Had the, had the same options. Uh, the the odds are different though. It was actually pink was rated the highest. So these odds makers must have done their research. Like, do they all have to wear hats at the wedding? Like that's all the good, women. That's a good question. They're I, all wearing some like know. like silly hats, you know? Well, like they're yeah. like old school flight attendants. <laughs> well, now that I think about it, you never really see the queen without a hat, do you? 
No. Maybe she's balding. Except for on like the coins. That's it. Oh, she got a little crown. Oh, yeah, you're right. On the bill. She's on the $20 bill, is she not? Yeah. She's, it's an old photo. She, she's got... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A <laughs> little, little art, artist's rendition. Yeah. But maybe she's balding. Maybe that's why you never see her without she the hat. could be. I don't know. If I was the queen, I was balding. I don't want people to know. All right. Uh, the next bet was, who will have a child next? Uh, Meghan Markle or Kate Middleton? The, she's got three. Exactly. So it seemed like the odds are kind of skewed. Yeah. But the bet's there. Okay. Uh, who will say I do or I will first? The options were Harry, Megan, or both at the same time. How romantic. You know, there's no way. The odds makers would zoom in on the tape and they'd be Gay? like, no. <laughs> the, odds, the odds makers would be like, nope, look, he started saying it first. No way. I know. They're getting out of their money. <laughs> this might have been my, my favorite bet because it's just like, I cannot believe the level people are betting on. Will Megan show cleavage during the ceremony? Oh, come on. I swear to you. Uh, the odds were uh, much higher for for you to get more money if, if it was a bet. Yes. yes. Yeah, of course. And then the final bet was, uh, will Trump tweet about the wedding on May 19th, which was the day of the wedding? Um, now, the best part was I was looking on a subreddit for sports betting, uh-huh. and that's how I found this list. And it was the comments, right? So people are coming in like, like people who take their betting seriously. Is no cleavage a lock, somebody says? <laughs> and then somebody comes in and they're like honestly as stupid as this whole thing is i think that's the bet the dress will be classy in air quotes here which doesn't necessarily mean no cleavage but i think it typically does then it then it gets a little further down and the person who made the original post says the the odds book specifies <laughs> they have the exact specification clear and visible separation of the bosom is required for <laughs> yes that's how particular. <laughs> that's how particular they're getting for these bets. I, I just yeah, it's it legit. This is no. It's not a oh, joke. Oh, oh, it's it's no joke. It's it was just unbelievable reading through this. I just that is pretty funny. Wacky. Um. All right, so that wraps up this episode of uh, Queen, Queen Talk. Talk, and now back to your regularly scheduled scruff cast. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah, we'll we'll move right along here. We'll move right along. You want to take the next one, Dan? Yeah. Sure. So uh, it's a it's a bit of an underdog story, I'd call it. <laughs> maybe not an underdog story. Maybe just. It's I'll, a, I'll it's just a, I'll just. I'll it's a story it. nonetheless. <clears throat> so the other day, this was in uh, I think a suburb of Atlanta, I believe. Um, there was a uh, a black man, uh, who was a real estate investor, and he was going to check out a house, on a street to see if he was going to buy it and whatnot. So, um. Long story short, um, a woman, the next door neighbor, uh, she came out and told him to leave. And um, she was unsure of what he was doing there, whatever. And he explained to her, I'm a real estate investor. So she ended up calling the cops anyway. So, John, I'll let you take over of like what actually kind of all went down here. Sure. So I read you a little bit of details out of the article. So he's a real estate investor, like Dan said. Um, he, w- he was examining the property because it's like some repairs need to be made to this house. So th- this woman comes out and just, like, sort of confronts him. And is like, what are you doing? Like, obviously, she's never seen him in the neighborhood. And uh, she, like, kind of pesters him. And he even shows her, like, hey, look, I have written permission to... To be here. To be here and, like, go in the house and check it out. And he had, he had like, documents signed by the person who owned the property, right? Yeah. And, like, first off, this woman is, is like, oh, you know, like, are you allowed to be here? Like, this woman doesn't need to know any of this. Like, she's just, like... Getting off her off her porch and you know hobbling down there. Yeah, like it's not it's none of her business why why this guy's here. I would understand if she was like a concerned neighbor, like oh I know this person and like they never said anything. No, I yeah. bet this is just some nosy bitchy lady. Especially too if you if you know the house is up for sale or if it's like abandoned and it's gonna be up for sale and no one's yeah. up there. Like, would you really suspect that much going off? Someone's coming by looking around. Like, if someone's trying to break into the house, they're not gonna be that obvious about it. Like, oh you know, just like casually looking around, you know. Yeah, it's just like the entitlement of this woman to like go over and be like, "Oh, well, are you allowed to be here? Show me your document." And the guy's like, he shows her the documents and everything, and she was like, nah, "I'm not buying this." So she calls the police on this yeah. guy. Of course, because and and this happens like it seems like on a weekly basis. Oh, know? there's tons. There's tons of stories. There's a black like person this. doing something just you know uh, that uh, normal people just do. Just could be anything. Yeah. And a white person calls the cops. Like there was a story, just a little sidetrack story here. There was a story. I think was it Harvard. Or Yale, well, one of those. Uh, I heard the story as well. One of those, one of those, like and there prestigious was a, universities. Uh, a black student, like who went to school there, that was sleeping in her dorm room, 
And yeah, she like fell asleep while she was studying. Yeah, well, with the door open, and some white person came by and called the cops. Like, and then the cops came and, and like here. questioned this girl, like, "Oh, what are you doing here?" Blah blah. blah whatever. She's like, I, I go here. Like, what, what do you want from me? There was another story where it was. Uh, did you see the white woman was complaining because there was uh, a black family, I believe, having a barbecue outside? Did you, do you hear about this? No. That was, that was well. That's pretty much the whole story. A white woman she called the police and complained because. This black family was having a barbecue. So like, I were saw, they at a park or like were they at their house? No, they're like a like in the neighborhood, like at a park. They weren't like at this like woman's house. Like the, this woman had no business complaining. Yeah, yeah. So I saw that sort of as a retaliation, which must have just drove this woman crazy. Mm-hmm. There was like literally hundreds of black people showed up having a barbecue at this <laughs> park, like just packed. That's awesome. Like this woman must have just been fuming. But this story takes an interesting twist because it's yes. not like the rest so, of those stories. And, you know, in, in those cases, right, like in, I believe it was Yale University, you know, the like campus police, police officers show up and they like start questioning the student like, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, here? they question this oh. black student like, oh, what are oh, you you're doing Oh, you're sleeping here, here and you're black? Oh, uh, what's up with that, right? Well, in this case, the police show up. The guy explains the scenario. He, and he, he starts recording. He records everything. He starts everything. recording, right? Yeah. And uh, he explains it to her. And then the police actually, as they rightfully should, have uh they take his side and they say hey if you have any more problems they say to the woman they, they say to the woman but they say to the woman um they say if she interfered with his work anymore that she would be arrested yeah they they, they tell him hey if you have any more problems with her what i want you to just call me back over here she will go to jail for that that's what they tell the the real estate investor guy mm-hmm. and the, so the woman's getting stamped and she's like hurry hurry up do and get out and the police just tell her like hey, you can take all day yeah he's allowed so to the, be here lady yeah. So the police just stand stand up there. He's like, "Oh, you guys want to stand out here and you know, like, keep an eye on this crazy bitch while I'm taking fo- you know photos of the inside of the house and everything." He's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So it was just kind of an interesting story because it's like this woman got you know what she deserved. Now she didn't yeah. go to jail or you anything. You don't get to but... hear stories like no. this too often. It's always the the other way around. So yeah. it's nice to br- bring some light to these ones, I guess, right? Yeah. You know, sometimes on the scruff cast, we want to bring a little bit of positivity. Well, that's right. It's like the whole thing is, it's like. There's so many people calling the police over just such stupid little things. Like, the police have more important things to worry about, you know? Yeah, I know. And like, stuff it's like, like a, wa- a waste of time. Have... Some people just got to mind their own shit. That's all it comes down to, you know? Mind your yeah. damn business. Get out of here. Yeah, people just feel, like, in- entitled. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, what, why is this person just sleeping in this dorm? Oh, why is this guy? Everybody, everybody what, wants to be the hero, you know? Stuff. Yeah, like, wow, I, I called and... He was taking photos of the house, and, you know, next thing I knew, he had a full camera roll, and then he left. Like, give me a break, lady. Come on. Like, what, you're not helping I had to put a stop just to being, that. You're just being nosy. You're just being, I don't know. You're, yeah, you're, being you're nosy. crazy you're white lady. Yeah. Those damn crazy white ladies. Yeah. I hear you. All right, well, we'll move on. What do we got next, John? All right, next, um, we are going to talk about a women's advocacy group. Oh, here Try- we go! <laughs> <laughs> trying trying to get a, a couple of uh, musical artists in some hot water. So, I'll just read you the headline. Women's advocacy group calls on Spotify to remove Eminem chili peppers. First off, the, 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 it's, the, the red hot chili peppers? Not to be it? mistaken with the red hot chili pipers. No, that's the famous. This is the band. real red hot chili peppers red hot we're talking chili about. And other artists uh, accused of sexual misconduct. So, women's adv- advocacy group... Uh, it goes by the name of Ultraviolet. They've been petitioning against Spotify. Gay. <laughs> so Sp- Spotify, uh, they have a new hate content policy. I'm putting in air quotes here, which they enacted by removing the uh, music of R. Kelly, who's had like plenty of all these like scandals and, and you know yeah. accusations stuff against him. Yeah, and just and, recently, he was I think he was just dropped by like his management group and stuff like that. Yeah, he's got a lot of problems. He's been, not, he's been having problems for a long time. Yeah, this, this is not an R. Kelly cast. We're P- not going to go on. Peeing on people and stuff. <laughs> yeah, everybody remembers Dave Chappelle's sketch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so R. Kelly and another artist, which I've never heard of, XXX Tentation, which just sounds a little sketchy. Uh, so these two artists with a long history of sexual misconduct and domestic abuse. Um, that's, they, that's not a real artist. X. X, I, X, I don't know. I, tem- t- I, I, I don't feel like Spotify is really um, missing out on much by removing the, that person's music or yeah. that group or whatever the hell they are. Yes, yes. Anyways, uh, so these people, they fall under the hate content policy, whatever that means. And uh, Spotify removed the music from the playlist and their like algorithmic recommendations and everything. 
So now this woman's advocacy group, Ultraviolet, but the name is is um, they're urging the streaming giant. What 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 a weird name! Is urging the streaming giant. I don't know. Any, anyways, <laughs> we're all we're all over the place today. Yeah. Uh, to to do the same with artists accused of sexual abuse. So they wrote an open letter, um, and they're calling it the likes of. Uh, this is a list of uh, artists here. Chris Brown, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nelly, Eminem, Don Henley of the Eagles, Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, Takashi69. I don't even know. Who I'm is gonna, that? I don't know, but he's up to no good, according to Ultraviolet. Oh, and Takashi. Ted Nugent, citing them as artists, and this is in quotes, who continue to profit from your promotion. I believe all the artists will be profiting from their promotion. Yeah. Um, it's so basically, you know, they're up in arms. They're like, hey, what about these people, you know? Like, take their music down. Yeah. And I, I know how I feel about it. I, w- I want to ask you, Dan, what's your take on this? Uh, I had one take going into this, and now I'm kind of thinking something else. Like, well, like, my one take is, like, when's, when's this going to stop? You know? Like, I don't know for sure, but, like, let's say you got into a little, you know, a little trouble outside of your work. Okay. You know? Outside. Nothing to do with your work. Would you mm-hmm. be fired from your job? Would you be never allowed to work in that industry ever again? I don't think so. Right? So, I mean, so it, why it should depends. It be any like, different here, right? I'm not like the face of the company or anything, right? No. So why should it matter? Like, if you get a speeding ticket or you have a criminal record after you've already gotten your job, should you be fired? This is a little different, this right? Because, different. like, if you're Eminem in this case, right? Yeah. You are like your own job. Yeah, you know, I understand. Your like own sp- brand, like Spotify has, you know, their platform, and Spotify certainly entitled to be like, you know, oh, you know, this is a bad look for us. We don't want to be associated with this person. Yeah, for whatever reason, right? They're a business. They can just be like, nope, just drop you. Yeah, they can do whatever they want. But for these other groups to go and be like, hey, take these people's music down. They should be on there. What the heck? That's like, oh, like I understand the intention, but that's almost like a step too far for me. But like because uh, it's like if you if you're really bothered by these people's music, or if you're really bothered by these people or what they've done, all you can really do is just like don't support them, don't listen to their music, don't buy their CDs. If if it's really bothering you that Spotify is still supporting these artists, don't listen to anything on Spotify. Yeah, don't go on Spotify. You can tell people, but hey, then but don't then listen. how do they listen to their music? It's unfair for them. Of course, Dan. They, now know? they gotta. They have to be put between a rock and a hard place. They're like, but what about my morals? But what about my Taylor Swift songs? What do I do? <laughs> yeah, but the, like, the more I thought about this, like, as we were reading this article, Spotify kind of shot themselves in the foot by you know, taking R. Kelly off of their thing, right? Because these people kind of have a point. It's like, well, if you're going to take R. Kelly off, why don't you take all these other people off that have you know, gotten into similar trouble? That's when you get into a slippery slope, right? Exactly. It's like, where, where do you draw the line? See, well, you take them all off, or you like take none of them off. Almost as bad as R. Kelly, but maybe not. Eh, we'll just. But how do you how do you like, compare them? You know, like how do you ex- exactly. how do you say this one's worse than the other? Exactly, I mean, you, you can in well, most situations. But but it's you know it's not like a black and white scenario, right? There's no easily drawn line. No, right. So and here's the thing: I'm thinking like were people calling out for Spotify to remove R. Kelly music, or was Spotify just like, oh, uh, R. Kelly, uh. He's gotten some hot water here. Why don't we take him off the uh, out of the system, remove his music, and then now it's like a win for us. Like, wow, look at Spotify. Look We're at them awesome. Go. Yeah, I'm They're sure so it's progressive. A- They're against all of this bad stuff. I'm sure it's a bit of both. I'm sure, somebody but, somewhere. But here, here's the thing. It's under their, and this is in quotes here, hate content policy. Now, if you're Eminem. Well, maybe Eminem's a bad example because he's got some aggressive music. But oh, if, you're, yeah. if you're like, you know, uh, Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. Now, I'm not intimately familiar with all of the lyrics of all of their songs, but I, would you classify them as hate content? Uh, no, probably not. So why would, you know, why should his music be removed as a result of yeah. this hate content or, or policy? Or even Nelly. Right? Like... Nelly's fantastic. Like, it's one thing if it's the content, right? Like, the people are putting out songs that are, like, really racist or, like, homophobic or something, right? Where it's like, wow, this is like... Well, check in fairness, Eminem, um... I don't know. They claim he has some homophobic lyrics, but... Well, but... It's debatable. 
besides that, the that's, point. That's an issue. That's another issue entirely. I, I'm thinking of this whole, yeah, this yeah, whole yeah, yeah, like yeah. broad sweeping, like, oh, look at all these people for what what's happened in their personal lives. Their music should be removed. Yeah. Because I'm thinking if it's like hate, con- their hate content policy, it should be actually about the content, right? And if it's just like... Not about them. Oh, whoa, Steven Tyler, he's done some shady stuff. Take all that Aerosmith music down. It's like, well, how, how does that fit into hate content? Now you're just calling out this guy for other stuff that's happened. You can be a fan of somebody's work, but not like the person themselves. Yeah, I agree. They're, they're two separate entities. Yeah. I understand how it can be difficult sometimes to not like somebody, but be like, damn, but I, you know, I like their work, right? I appreciate like how good they are at something or you know, their creative work. You know, it's inspiring or whatever. You can you can respect somebody, but not necessarily like them. Exactly, right? Like think of athletes. There's some athletes you don't like, and they might play on a, a team you don't like, or you know, they just seem like they're kind of stuck up. Or but you can acknowledge, like, ah, oh, but you can be like, they, damn, Connor awesome. David's a yeah. good hockey player, but maybe I'm not a huge fan of him. Yeah, exactly. But like, you got to admire his skill, right? I agree. Yeah. So, I don't know. And another thing I'm thinking is like, so let's say in the case of like Steven Tyler. Well, what about the rest of Aerosmith? They're like, damn, Steven, you really messed up for the rest of us. Yeah. What the heck? Now we're all missing on these royalties. I don't know. It's, it's true. It's yeah, you're attacking. Slippery it's slope. Same with the Red Hot Chili. I read a little further into, because I didn't understand the Red Hot Chili Peppers thing of why they were attacking them. And it just has to do with the lead singer, Anthony Kiedis. And uh, something he talked about in his book. He's got a book called Scar Tissue, mm-hmm. which came out in 2005, I think it was. And uh, he just tells a story of how, like, when he was 23, he was dating this, like, 14-year-old girl or whatever. And so that's that's essentially what that's about. So, like, oh, my God. This thing from, like, 20 years ago. Yeah. Whether, you know, it's shady or not or whatever. Who knows? I don't know. He wrote about it in his book. Yeah. Uh-huh. That means that, like, 25 years later now, his music should come down and, like, the whole band should be penalized for this. Yeah. According to you, this woman's adv- advocacy group, apparently. How, how do you feel? How do you feel about stuff being dug up like that, like from 20 years ago? It depends. Like, just because enough time, or just because a lot of time has passed yeah. since something happened doesn't mean it's like all of a sudden it's bueno. Right? Oh, like, yeah. At, like, think of like Bill Cosby. All this stuff came up like 30 years later, and it's not just like, oh, Bill, it was 30 years ago. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah that, that was another era. <laughs> but like it, it depends, right? Like, yeah. if somebody like murdered somebody, and you know, thirty years later, you find out, you don't go like, "Damn, I really should found about this thirty years ago." No, oh, well, you really fooled us. But what if somebody's accused of something, but not actually convicted of something? See, this is another thing. It says right in this article, allegations. Right? These are people who. Um, let me get the exact line here. It was urging the streaming giant to ban people, uh, ban artists who have been, uh, this is in quotes, accused of sexual abuse. Now, in in plenty of these cases, you know, this could be 100% true. Or it could be 100% false. We don't know. Yeah. Right? The only people who know are really are these artists. But, like, is the accusation enough to just be like, that's it? Yeah. You know, take it down. It's interesting because just say a couple weeks ago, I don't know if you heard the... Uh, um, the old defensive coordinator for the Patriots, New yeah. England Patriots, uh, Matt Patricia, I think that's his name. Yeah. Now he's the uh, head coach for the Detroit Lions. And so, of course, somebody digs up some dirt on him from, like, 1992 when he was in college. And uh, he was accused of, like, uh, sexual assault or whatever like that. And he went to go to court and, like, to defend himself. And the girl, like, didn't want to testify. She didn't want to, yeah, I don't testify. And so the whole case was just dropped. Okay. And that was that. So now it's, like, come out, and he's had to, like, release statements about it and stuff like that, right? But this is something that happened, like, oh, my God, like, 26 years ago? Mm-hmm. You know? And he says, like, he said the most frustrating part is that she didn't want to go to court, and I didn't have a chance to defend myself and tell the truth and tell what actually happened kind of thing, right? Yeah, it's not really just. Yeah. Right? Like, he's like, okay, we're, you know, we're getting into what whatever it is that happened. Because, like, the, the case it, is thrown out. That should be it. Just, yeah. like, wipe your hands up, wash your hands up, and that's it. It's done, but it's not because it's going to haunt him forever because he's not able to defend himself in that time, right? Yeah, he's like, okay, you know, we're, we're going to go to court. We'll, we'll deal with this, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. Maybe she's making it up. Maybe he did something terrible. We don't know. And then she's just like, nope. And he's like, okay. Now he's just got this, like, stain on his record forever. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's, like, deservedly so or not, like, there's no way to know. But there's, like, that 
terrible stigma, right? Well, once an accusation of something comes, like that's it. You're just in the in the court of like public perception. You're you're guilty forever. Yeah. Right. And there's just no no coming back from there. No. Which is. Oh, it's like a slippery slope, right? Like, and, no, and no one will stand by anybody. You know what I mean? No. In situations like that. You're not gonna it's be like, like, oh, man, oh, the public's not liking us. Hope see you, buddy. Gonna just roll you right under the bus as it's coming by. Like, that's oh, it of instantly. Course. It, it all comes down to, like, big brands and them wanting their money and stuff. Look at, like, Tiger Woods. Best golfer of, of all time. Superstar athlete. He gets into, you know, a bit of a, some scandals. Like, maybe he's cheating on his wife, some marital trouble, whatever. And then, boom, sponsors are just like, boop, boop, boop. That, Drop, that, dropping them. That one's ridiculous. Dropping them like nothing. That one's ri- like I don't know. I don't want to really get into it, but that that's ridiculous. Yeah, we don't want to uh, no tiger talk segment. Guy, no, but just like the guy cheats on his wife, and all of a sudden he's getting sponsors from his job dropping him. What? That's a, that's a problem between him and his wife. That's another issue. What, of- he, what he did wasn't right, but like that's nobody else's business. <laughs> it's 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 similar to this uh, Spotify thing where it's like something outside of your yeah job, right? But even that, it's not like he committed a crime, you know? Sexual assault's a crime. Yeah. Or anything like that. That's a crime. But what he did wasn't a crime. It's just he did something, you know, that's not, you know. Right, and then and then all the brands worry about it themselves. Like, ooh, is this going to make us look bad? A cheater on our end? Well, like, and like, like the CEO of those companies isn't out there, you know, fooling around with everyone he can get his hands on. Like, like 15 years ago. Uh, you know, there wasn't all the social media and this outcry of like Nike, you gotta drop him, right? But no. Nike, Nike still went went ahead and did it. Nowadays, oh man, like you you have no chance, right? No. You you make one mistake as like a, somebody in the public eye, people are just all over you. Because I I feel like nowadays people love tearing other people down. They like they get joy out of being like, ooh, this guy messed up. Let let's go after let's him. take him down yeah yeah but the best is when you see people on twitter pull up tweets from like five years ago and they're like oh really that's what you think but what about this from five years ago and it's like maybe i've grown as a person in the last yeah. five years maybe <laughs> things have changed maybe i was an idiot five years ago yeah oh yeah yeah that's the thing too right right like they pull up like it happens a lot with like um sports drafts and stuff like that yeah it just happened recently in the nfl some kid was getting drafted, and he's probably 20 years old, 20 years old, and they pulled up a tweet from, like, five, six years ago of him, and he said some, like, racist thing, right? It was kind of like, it was like, he, like he, did, he said it, like, jokingly in the tweet, whatever he tweeted, which he still probably shouldn't have said anyway, but, um, but yeah, they just bashed him for it, so that's that, but, <sighs> I, don't, I don't know, people just, make mistakes, some of them are unforgivable, some aren't, I don't know, it's... Uh, people just love tearing other people down. Yeah. I don't know. But right, do you want to do you want to move on to the next story? I don't know if this is a, a step up or a step down. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a step down. <laughs> All right, you take it away, Dan. All right. So, um, in uh, here in Canada, we have a, a coffee chain called Tim Hortons. For our two American listeners, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a national treasure. Yeah. So anyway, um, in BC, there was a. Uh, a woman who went to Tim Hortons uh, to ask to use the bathroom. Um, so she was denied access. So what she did was um, she pulled her pants down, uh, took a poop right on the floor, and then threw her poo at the employees. That's pretty This extreme. is no joke. This is real. This actually happened. Uh, and there's even a video that you can watch of security footage. At at your own risk. At your own risk. So apparently the uh, the reason this woman was not allowed to use the bathroom because like th- there's times where it's like um like they make you buy something if if you yeah, want to use the bathroom stuff. for customers which, only which, right yeah which they don't want sense, just right? especially in busier cities they don't want just people coming in and just to use the bathroom exactly which make which makes sense um, but apparently this woman was denied access um, due to past behavior they didn't elaborate on that but um, I don't know she well she's She's obviously crazy. So she's probably some crazy crack person. Uh, and they, like, I'm, I'm like, John, I'd like you to watch this video, like, right now. I don't even know if I want Please. to, but I may, I may just for the podcast. Please do it. 
So it was originally tweeted out by somebody who said, "So today, the Tim Hortons twenty minutes away from me, this happened." And then it's like security footage it must must have been re- released here. So you see the woman standing at the counter yelling, "I want to use the bathroom," and they're like, "Sorry, lady, you gotta buy a donut." And she's like, "I won't buy a donut. I've been here plenty of times. I really gotta poo. You better let me in there right now." Oh, she's getting enraged. She's she's going over there. She's grabbing napkins. She's preparing. She's Are you watching one, this one right last now? Chance, yeah. I'm, oh, jeez. I'm narrating play by play. Okay, it's go ahead. Happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's taking off her sweater. She's full on squatting down. She's just pooping right on the floor. You see the poop come out. You see the poop. Oh wow, that was a vicious throw. She yeah. Like, <laughs> she she gave him like a, a two like a seam monkey. Fa- a two seam fastball there. I, I, She's like I gotta play one for more the time too. Oh no. Yeah. That was a much like this is a forty. This is a sped up version. Like yeah, it's like it's, it's like forty seconds long. This woman freaks out on the employee. Removes a sweater tied around her waist. Poops on the floor. Picks it up. And gives him a nice overhand pitch. Right at the poor employee. <laughs> just poop flying. And the funniest part of it, too, is like as she's there, like in mid poop, like one of the employees is standing in front of her on the phone, probably with the police. Yeah. Oh, we, got an ra- we got an enraged woman pooping. Code 404. Unbelievable. Like, there's been plenty of times in my life I've been angry. That is. But I've never been that angry. She picked up the whole poo. The yeah. whole poo she picked up. I don't see anything on the floor left. Yeah, we're not talking about a partial poo. We're talking about the whole poo. The poop. The whole poop. And nothing but <laughs> nothing the poop. Nothing but the poop. <laughs> and, and funny enough, she's pooping like up against this little side wall here. There's somebody sitting on a table on the other side, like sitting there eating a bagel or something. Can you imagine? You're having a damn. bad day or you're like you're going for a lunch and you're like, damn. This lady's mad. Like <sighs> We should have like said a disclaimer before we even started talking about this one. I feel yeah, like we just got into this one. I don't, I don't. It's gotten away from us. I don't know what's happening here. This is this is by far the most disgusting thing we've ever talked about. Talk but about you know, if you, if your story makes a scruff cast, you're a big deal. So we got to say to this lady, you're a big deal now. You're a big deal. This went all viral. It yeah. was even on on BuzzFeed. Yeah, it's like it's not that there's this is a big story to be talked about, but it's it's uh it's pretty incredible. And I would uh I would suggest everybody check it out. Like it is pretty nasty. You see her pooping, but. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty remarkable that she actually just commits to it. It's funny because I was talking to two people at work about this, <laughs> and um, two of us were on the same side of like, you know, n- this woman must be crazy because no normal person would do that. Oh, for sure. And the other person was like, "Well, you know what? Like, you know, what if if you know if she if they don't let me use the bathroom, like I'm gonna do the same thing. You know what I mean? We're like, no, you wouldn't. Like." Yeah, no easy, sane person would do say. something like that. Like, but it's also like, well, you're not entitled to use their bathroom. It's a business. Exactly. You'd maybe want to, like, oh yeah, take it. I'll show right you here. I'll you know? shit right on the floor. Yeah, exactly. But you're not actually gonna do it. No, it's 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 like when you have an argument with somebody and then you're taking a shower and you're thinking about it later. You're like, damn, I should have said that. Oh, what a roasted him so good. But in exactly. the moment, you know, it's it's much harder. And apparently, this woman was known to police too. So yeah. So I wonder how many other stores she's pooped in. Yeah. <laughs> right mom. and like you, you're thinking about it you're psyching yourself up once those pants come down what if you get a little bit of stage fright you got all of tim horton staring at you waiting for the tim oh i know imagine you're just like yeah like the uh the royal canadian uh mounted police uh said she was briefly detained after the incident like just briefly i suppose like use that that should be a like five years in jail <laughs> Maybe she's threatening them to throw more poop at them. Five years in jail, that seems a little extreme. If someone threw poo at you, you would like you wouldn't want them to just like suffer in jail? Well, yeah, but I mean like I feel like in jail it's like a poo free for all. Dude, this poor just, guy. He's probably just like you know, making minimum wage part time worker. Just came from after school, you know what I mean? Just trying to make a few bucks. Maybe he had a bad day at school and he's like, Oh man, I hope things yeah. go smoothly at work. His boss oh, damn. You know what I mean? His boss like says like, Hey, you know what? Can't let anybody use that bathroom unless they pay for it. Especially that woman with the blue sweater wrapped around her waist. <laughs> she's known. She's on the, the yeah. wall the wall. And so chain. he's like, All right, so she comes in, she's like, I wanna use your bathroom <coughs> And he's like, Oh, listen, ma'am, I'm sorry, but you uh, you can't use the bathroom. I'm gonna use a mess hat. Ma'am, uh, like really I'm sorry, but like my boss tells me uh you can't use this bathroom. I'm going to take a shit right on your floor then. Yeah, okay, ma'am, sure. And then sure enough, she actually does. Yeah, you, like, oh, you, no, what do I do? Yeah, and he's sitting there, standing there on front of her on his cell phone, it looks like. Maybe he's calling his boss. 
uh, Jeremy, um, that lady came in and she just shit on She is floor. currently... Uh, oh, she's throwing it at me, huh? She's currently pooping on the floor. She hit one of the coffee machines. <laughs> Turds are flying. Ne- never buy a cho- uh, chocolate dip donut from yeah. there anymore. <laughs> How fresh are these timbits? I don't want to take the risk. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, that, that... Crazy woman poops at Tim Hortons. That's pretty much the the summary. Let's That's move on from that. Like, that is, right. yeah, nasty. Everybody, right. go check that video out. You just search up Tim Hortons poo, and you can probably find <laughs> it on on YouTube. I'm sure it's not that For, hard. Forever, it will be in the Google Auto Complete. You yeah, Tim Hortons poo will show up. Yep. I wish they slow motion the the poo throw a little better. It happens a little fast. I didn't like that, but yeah, this woman, she's she's got a bit of an arm on her. Like, do you remember that homeless guy that they found a couple years ago, and he had like the golden voice for radio? Yeah, and yeah. He yeah. was making this push, like Ted Williams, the homeless man with the golden voice. Yeah, and he actually did like a Kraft macaroni and cheese ad. I remember. Oh, really? So it was like you know he kind of went viral, and his hidden talent was discovered. I feel like the same might happen for this Sorry, lady. Yeah, I was watching this video again. This I feel like terrible. the the same might happen for this lady with her like monstrous pitching arm. She might be the first woman to play in the major leagues. Like she's whipping this thing, like, like it's, it's like log shaped when she picks it up. By the time it hits its target, it's probably like full sphere because of yeah, how fast like she whipped. This makes thing. the Olympics as a yeah. shot put. <laughs> that was a good shot put throw. A shit put. Oh. <laughs> All right, m- m- moving on. Yes. Um, we cover a lot of different topics on the Scruffcast. We're gonna move on from poo to religion. <laughs> <laughs> from poo to pope. From, from poo to pope. From poop to pope. Um, all right. So, Pope Francis, he's in the news again. Pope Compar- Francis is in the news a lot. He's a bit of a rogue. Uh, not not he's, really. He's but. a bit of a rogue pope. Rogue pope. Like, they're sitting around in the Vatican just kind of like, ooh, cool, buddy. Like, like you know how Donald Trump, like, I'm sure his, well, I don't know if he even has a PR team. He's just kind of doing whatever the hell he wants. Like, you know, he gets on Twitter and he does stuff in the pro like, Oh man, now we gotta answer questions about this. That's probably how the Vatican feels sitting around with Pope Francis. So, um, so you know, there's all this like sort of like stink on the Catholic Church of all this like weird like sexual abuse and stuff and stuff, right? So somebody who like was subjected to this, um, like went and they met with the Pope and they're talking to him. Well, this guy's this guy's gay, is he not? Yeah, yeah, and, and the guy's also gay, and so. He met with Pope Francis. Pope Francis said to him, this is a quote from him, that uh, God made him gay and his sexuality does not matter, right? Yeah. God, actually... God made you like that and loves you like that. He's saying, like, you know what? You're gay. Eh? Not a big deal. Yeah, the Catholic yeah, yeah. Church, God, <clears throat> not, he's not saying me and the church. He's saying God. He's speaking for God, being like, you know, me, me Well, God, he's, you know? he's God's spokesperson. We're, he's we're, the Pope. He's like, you know, me and God, we're pretty close. We're like peanut butter and jelly. I'm telling you, he says it's all cool. <laughs> right? He's, he's giving this guy a little bit of, like, Oh, okay. You know, I'm feeling good now. Yeah, they feel a lot better. There's an extended quote too. He said, like the full thing he says. He says, you know, uh, Juan Carlos, uh, that does not matter. God made you like this. God loves you like this. The Pope loves you like this, and you should love yourself and not worry about what others say. Other what people say. I gotta say that very last sentence is like universal advice for everybody about everything. Not worry about what other people say. Yeah, for sure. But um, what's pretty amazing about this? This is coming from the Pope of the Catholic Religion. Yeah. You know? Who like the Catholics are like extremely against homosexuality. Like it's a it's a sin. Well, the you know, like by the book Bible Catholics don't want to paint everybody under the same light. Like if you're Catholic, you don't like gay people or something. Well, I'm not saying that, but what the Catholic religion teaches is homosexuality is bad. Yeah, I'm just saying I don't want people out there being like well, I'm Catholic and I listen, and I have no problem with gay people. What are you guys saying? Then you're not a real Catholic if you don't if you don't hate <laughs> gays. Yeah, what well, are you going to come throw your poop at me? <laughs> but I also kind of like how he talks in the third person here. The Pope loves you like the Pope this. loves you, you love too. yourself. Yeah, but like, good for this guy, man. You know, and this isn't the first time something like this has come up too. Like just the other day, not the other day. This was like a couple months ago. He was came out. And he's like, yeah, hell, hell doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't worry about and that. The Vatican's like, whoa, whoa, hey, so, uh, no, no, well, uh, like, slow it down here. You know, he didn't mean that. Uh, it was taken out of context. You know, they're sitting around with their the bishops, all their big red hats, or no, who? Does the cardinals wear their red? I don't know. The you know, sitting around with their staffs and their big hats, and they got to all jump up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's he saying here? But he's like, you know, he's the leader. He's the leader of all of them. Yeah, he was voted in. I think <laughs> I don't know how that works. I don't really remember, like. You're Pope for life, right? Once you become Pope, you're Pope until you die. No. 
Yeah? Wait, no. you, you retire from being the Pope? Then what do you do? Right before this guy, there was a different Pope. Yeah, and that Pope died. No, there was uh, Pope John Paul II. Yeah, he died a long time ago. Yeah, in like 2005 or something like that. Yeah, and then the no- next and Pope And then there was another in. one. And then this guy. That guy in between didn't die. <laughs> yes, he did. You don't retire from being the Pope. Dude, he did not die. I know he didn't. Maybe he stepped down. Maybe he's like, yes, Pope li- this Pope life is too much for me, you know? Oh, I, I don't I'm think so. I don't I love think touching so. little boys, but I also want to be the Pope, you know? <laughs> How do I go about, do I go I'm about this? I'm too much in the, in the public eye if I'm the Pope. Yeah. No. I gotta go back to being a regular priest so I can touch all the little boys. There's no way. You can't retire from being the Pope. What was his name? It was Pope... Xavier? No, Pope Benedict, wasn't it? Pope... <laughs> Where did I come up with Xavier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm telling you, he's still oh, alive. He retired. Pope, pope Benedict served as pope and sovereign of the Vatican City State from 2005 till 2013. His election occurred in 2005, following the death of John Paul II, Pope John Paul II. Yep. Um. Oh, he did retire. I told you. What? Since when is a pope allowed to retire? You can do whatever you want. It's like it's just a job, you know. I guess. Oh, he's 91. That's that's pretty oh, he old. Was, yeah, he was I'd old. Be getting, I'd be getting tired. Yeah, but like I mean, we we're talking about the queen, right? Like, how tough a life does the pope have? You got God right in your corner, fighting by by you on your side. You're like, I got nothing to worry about. I'm as I'm as holy as it gets. Yeah, I like this guy. This guy does seem to kind of go rogue a little bit, but like in a good way, though. You know, this is what religion should all be about. If you want to bring in the millennials, being inclusive you, you and being, be, you know, accepting yeah. of everyone. Doesn't matter what you are. And this guy's like. Yeah, you know, I'm religious, I love God and everything, but, like, yeah, screw that. I don't like that part of it. I'm going to make my own thing up, you know what I mean? Which is, like, a, a way more intelligent thought process of it, you know? Just like, hey, don't worry about it. You are who you are. God made you that way. And and he still, like, takes God into it, too, right? Not just like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah no, he, he's God like, loves you that way, man. Don't worry about he's it. He's like, oh, yeah, this is what I, this you know, this is what I feel. And, like, God, yeah, I, I know him. He feels yeah. like this, too. Don't this, even this worry. This guy is, like, probably super religious, like this the this um, Juan Carlos. He's probably super religious. And, like, you know, he's like feeling his whole life like ah oh, man like i'm not gonna be accepted by god finally gets a chance to talk to the pope don't know how that happened that's pretty incredible and uh pope's like yeah don't worry about it man you're good i'm just blown away that popes are allowed to retire i thought it was like you're, you're still for thinking like, about that you're, you're like blood was. brothers with god no you're not man. allowed to retire no you can, you can retire from being pope they it's probably just a pretty sweet job and that's why they all do it till they die <clears throat> Funeral oh. costs is probably covered, I'm sure. Yeah. In modern times, all popes have held office until death. Benedict is the first pope to have resigned without external pressure since Celestine V in, 19, in 1294. Oh, jeez. So he's like, I'm getting old. I had enough. Well, why, why would he even get elected? He was there for like eight years. Like, Why would he even put himself up for election if, you know? I don't know. He was 85 when he retired, so he went in at 77. Yeah. yeah, most of these guys are all from Europe too, but this guy's from Argentina, I think. Pope Francis. Yeah, pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, I wonder what the daily life is like as a pope. We'll never know. You wake up, you put on your pope robe, your pope hat. Boom! You're the pope. That's it. And that's it. <laughs> you yeah, probably pray a little bit here and there, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's all. That's all the Pope news for one day. All right, that's enough of Pope talk for now. Do you want? Do you want to take the next one, Danny? You want me to take this uh, one? No, you can. You can handle this one. All right. So the next article. I don't know if I should read the title first or. No, no, no. Just explain it. All right. Um, I don't know how to explain it without reading the title. Okay, it's as simple as this. <clears throat> so a family, and this is in China, right? Yes. Yes. A so, woman named Su Yun. So. Um, yeah, so young. So, um, two years ago, um, a family in China bought a puppy, like a dog. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, they were shocked at first about how much this dog ate. So she goes on to say, "It ate a box of fruits and two buckets of noodles every day." Which I don't know why you're feeding your dog noodles. Buckets of noodles. Buckets of noodles. Like you don't want to lean into the stereotypes, but like buckets of noodles. Just saying. So anyway, she's shocked saying. about how this dog, this puppy, is eating so much food. So why was this puppy eating so much food, John? So uh, there was, it turns out, a reason for its prodigious appetite, it says. The animal has grown into a 250-pound bear. 
So apparently this pet dog raised by a Chinese family for, for two years. It turned out it was a black bear. So the tagline, so the, the tagline of the article is, owners grow suspicious when animals show talent for walking on two legs. So I don't even know how they found, like, this bear cub, right? Somebody just selling it as a dog. And they're like, oh, let's get a little puppy for our family, right? How don't you know? Yeah. It, uh, it looks like a, like, bears look like bears. When bears are small, they look like small bears. Yeah, they don't look like dogs at all. They don't look all. like dogs at all. Right, so it, the article goes on to say, the family realized their errors when the pet did not stop growing and started showing a talent for walking on two legs. And then the uh, mother of the family says, in quotes here, the more he grew, the more like a bear he looked. <laughs> Obviously, because he was a, a bear. I am a little scared of bears, she goes on to say. <laughs> so apparently it's actually a type of like endangered species. It's a, oh, wow. a Asiatic black bear, which they had been raising as a dog for two years. He grew to 250 pounds. That's a hefty dog. Um, so the animal was taken and put into a wildlife rescue center after the family got in touch trying to find help, like... Okay, what do we do now with this bear? Yeah, and uh, I just thought, I just thought this was like a ridiculous story. Like, how do you not start to get the hints of like, ooh, maybe this dog's a little bit of trouble? Like, two years is a long time. But I'm also yeah. kind of surprised that they managed to like raise the thing and it was relatively tame for two years. Yeah, I guess like raising like, it from as a from when it was just a cub, not a puppy, a cub. That whole time, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know how you mix that up. Well, apparently, it's happened to other people. And the article it also says uh, a man from the same province in China raised a bear after finding it roaming in the forest, initially believing it to be a stray dog. Now, this guy was a little more uh, like cautious about it, and he he kept the dog, or which ended up being a bear, in a cage. But uh, these other people, not so, I guess. They just thought it was a family pet. They just thought it was a family pet. So now imagine you're these kids, right? You've grown to love this dog, which ended up being a bear, and now they got to take it away. Aww. Yeah, it kind of sucks, but, yeah, you know, it's, it's a bear. Bears don't belong in houses. No, definitely not. They belong in forests. 250 pounds is pretty hefty. Like, if this thing gets angry, you got no see chance. See you, you're gone. Wouldn't yeah. see you. Wouldn't want to be you. Bears are big. It's a black bear, so they're not as big. I think grizzly bears are like some of the biggest ones. Yeah. yeah. I think we talked about bears on our first podcast ever. We're taking it back. A 21 episode flashback. Oh, boy. Yeah, what do we what do we talk about bears? Uh, you told me you could uh, defeat one with your bare hands. Oh, yeah. 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 I still stand by that. Well, we'll never, we'll never know. D-clawed, D-teethed. <laughs> <laughs> Just gum you to death. Yeah. All right, well... Uh... I believe that that's it for news stories this week. Unless you have anything else you want to share, Dan? No, nope, I got nothing. Um, I'm not gonna lie, John. I don't believe this was our strongest podcast. You know what? It was. It was me. I didn't give you a hundred percent today. How? What percentage did you give me? I was. I was at about sixty. I. Oh, that's pretty weak. Sixty. I was. I'm just. Ah, I'm just a little tired today. You know. But you know what? If if I gave a hundred, I don't think I did. But let's pretend. It's a long I did. weekend again. You know. I'm. T- <laughs> I can't, it's yeah, clear it's I'm holiday. not at my best all, after it's a long holiday. Weekends. So just because it's a holiday doesn't mean the listeners get off without the five minutes of you know shameless self promotion. Absolutely. So because we haven't mentioned it all this episode yet, if uh, you know you have stories you want us to talk about, maybe you just want to share with us about how great the podcast is. Maybe you're listening on YouTube. You want to leave a comment and tell us if you want to reach out to us. How do they do that, Dan? They can reach us at scruffcast at gmail dot com or follow us on Twitter. At Scruffcast. At Scruffcast. Follow us on the gram. The gram. We're on the gram at the Scruffcast because somebody else out there already has Scruffcast. They've yes. taken it. Yeah. So follow us on Instagram. You know, we're always sharing those thumbnails I make for all, for all the videos that get posted on YouTube as well. So if you're on YouTube, search for Scruffcast, all one word. You'll find us. All of these, you know, hilariously witty images made for the podcast you know go in there give a thumb up give us a comment oh you guys are so funny subscribe right. we need more subscribers so we can just get our nice url youtube.com slash scruffcast so you don't have to search for us that's right and i, I think that's pretty much everywhere we are yeah um, but you know what yeah send us uh send us some ideas of what you would like us to talk about yeah get- if you don't like the way this podcast is going just like you guys can dictate it yourselves you <clears throat> yeah, just you, you it's whatever to- you want it's you the want- people's choice 
Yeah, you wanted to dive like deeper into like one specific topic and like kind of run with that through the episode. Want us to like you know just keep doing what we're doing, roll with news stories. If if you find a story that you find interesting and you want us to talk about it on the podcast, you know, send it to us. We yeah. would be more than happy to go through you guys' suggestions instead of like you know just pulling what we think is interesting. You know, you gotta let us know. It's still work in progress. We're Twenty-one right. episodes in. We're still trying to figure this thing out. Still trying to figure it out. Yep. Okay. I think that's it for this episode john i think so i think so all right thanks everybody for listening to episode 21 of this craft cast we will catch you next week i can tell you really good at distracting